This year has just flown by already and I'm not prepared at all. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Taylor and I make scrunchies and bows. I've been doing so for 10 years now. In today's video, I'm going to be getting ready my tote bag launch. So if you don't know, I recently launched some bow tote bags and they sold out. So I was so excited about that. So I do have a couple to make this vlog, but I also need to make all the other scrunchies and bits and pieces like bows that were also sold. So I do have quite a bit to do. And before I get too ahead of myself, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more content. So I think plan of attack today is work out what I've actually got in stock. Still haven't finished the scrunchie wall, but I'm actually almost done the regular size scrunchies. <laughs> almost. Um, I still have like everything else to do, but you know, that's like the biggest part of the scrunchie wall is making all these scrunchies. There's probably... I'm gonna say maybe 600, 700 of the regular size scrunchies, but then I also need to make the thin elastic and whatnot as well. So, I mean, there's still probably a lot more to go, but I am pretty happy with that. I've been actually taking all this stuff to market. I've been sewing the tubes, like just smashing them out while I'm at home and then taking them to markets uh, not flipped. I flip them, cut them in half, form them at the market and then also elasticate them. Then I take them home, swap the elastic, then bring them back to the market so then I can like put them under and over. So I have another bag to go and then I get to sew all the labels in and then I get to work on all the Excel scrunchies, the petites and I've actually sewn the minis up. Um, they just need to be elasticated as well. So, I mean, it could be worse. I'm hoping to have all of this done by mid-year because I'm doing a massive sale <laughs> mid-year for like the end of financial year sales. So I wanted to, yeah, well not massive. I was gonna do like 30%, I think, I don't know. I wrote everything down. I usually am very fast and loose with my, I guess, launches and sale periods. I sort of just do it whenever I'm thinking about it. <laughs> and I don't really put much thought into it, but I thought that's probably not the best way to do it. So I've changed launches. I'm not doing one a month anymore. I'm going to do it when I feel like it's necessary. <laughs> and then I've also got, yeah, different like sales events or different like releases planned. What have we got? I'm doing like a mini drop in, like a mini drop slash restock in about two weeks. That'll be for the tote bags. I want to do a couple more different designs because at the moment I'm sold out of all of the more expensive ones that have like the nicer fabrics. So I've sold out of all those and I haven't been able to restock them just yet. I need to make sure that uh, once I make everything, I've got enough to make more. And then I was also gonna put a couple new ones up. So I was gonna do a mini drop with that. And then the end of financial year, which is only a month away now, I was gonna do a little sale there and then also clear out some stuff. I have a lot of like scrunchies and bows and hair claws even that I just, kind of just dead stock that's just sitting there. So I'd like to kind of clear them out and make room <laughs> for other things. I do have a really exciting collaboration with Cystic Fibrosis Charity from Queensland, I think they are. They reached out to me and was wondering if they could be the charity for one of my launches. So I will be going to have a look for op shop fabrics and like different things that have roses on them. Like saying 65 roses helps say Cystic Fibrosis. I don't even know if I'm saying it right. <laughs> so I thought that was really cool. So I'm going to be doing the charity scrunchies and sort of probably doing that a bit bigger than usual. Usually I only do like one or two designs, but I'll probably do a couple because, yeah, I think that's a really cool thing to like be collaborating with a charity for. That will be like midway through August will be my next actual like launch slash release. And that will be like for heaps of scrunchies and bows. I feel like the camera keeps like not focusing just keeps going out of focus, which I can't help. Or is it my eyes? I really don't know at this point. Then I need to like figure out where to put Halloween in as well, whether to do that with the August drop or just do its own drop like in September. But then on the 1st of October, I want to release the advent calendars and all the Christmas stuff. So I want to try and get in early this year. I do try and release all the Christmas stuff around October every year. I would like to try and get those all up, especially the advents, because usually I wait with the advents and 
yeah, that's not good. I need to get them out sooner rather than later. Also the gift boxes, which I might put that on, on here because I don't have that on here. <laughs> gift boxes are also like mostly a last minute thing for me and I take them to markets, but I'd love to have gift boxes available for you guys. I've also got a couple new products coming out for the gift boxes. They're just gonna be like limited ones that I'm gonna be making. I've also got like a bunch of gorgeous hair claws and combs coming and I want to try and see if I can get them engraved with just like Taylor Rose because I have this new tool, X tool I think it is. They sent it to me, try out. So I'd like to try and see if I can do that with it. I don't even know really what it's for yet because I haven't even opened the box and I've had it sitting there for like two weeks. I just haven't had time. So yeah, I'd love to check that out and maybe do a video on that. Yeah, then we got Black Friday. Boxing Day, and then I'll be closed for like a month for my birthday. On my 11th birthday in January, um, I usually close from December the 31st until my birthday, which is the 21st of January. That is my plan. <laughs> Different launches and sale dates, I guess. See how that turns out. I really don't think I'll, yeah, I don't really, I don't really do Boxing Day sales. So I don't know, I might even close before Christmas. But I thought it'd be a good idea to write it all down. And I'm really glad I did because it all makes sense now and I can kind of see a clear picture of what the rest of the year will look like. How are we in May? I don't know. It's the end of May. This year has just flown by already and I'm not prepared at all. I'm already feeling so burnt out with everything. I've actually cut back right, right back on market. I think next month I'm doing three. Oh, actually I did get accepted into the Winter Nights Market in Melbourne. So that'll be like one extra to be full. But yeah, it's going to be very interesting. I can tell when I've like got really burnt out because I start not like I just stop posting on anything like I just stop posting Instagram reels and posts and stuff <laughs> which I know is so bad but it's just what I do I just like I can't be bothered even like I can't even go into it to schedule it to post it I'm just like all the stuff's there I just I can't. As soon as this launch is all posted and stuff I think I'll feel like a bit more like relaxed. I think I just put way too much on my plate for March, April and May. Um, like March I did 13, almost 13 markets and then April a few viral videos because I was posting so much online and then May I've just been trying to catch up with everything so I'm just like yep yeah, all right slow down. I know it's a good thing but it's also bad. I, like, I know it's a really good thing to like you know have so many orders and like be so busy. Like this year I wanted to really like try and slow down a bit more. Um, and have a work-life balance rather than just a work work balance <laughs> there is no life in there so so but I think once I get the scrunchie wall up I'll be absolutely fine for online because it won't matter what anyone orders because everything will be in stock and I'll just like feel oh, all good and then for markets markets are easy um, enough for me because I can generally smash out quite a bit at markets um, and make a bit of stock so not too concerned there either. Just I just need another couple weeks and then I'll be in front again instead of chasing my tail. Anyway, if I don't stop chattering now, I'm going to keep talking. So let's just get straight into it. Little side note, I hate myself sometimes. <laughs> just popped into my head, so I had to say it. I think I will be doing the small business advent calendars this year, but I need to, I guess, be very selective with what I'm choosing. And uh, it's kind of hard because like, on one hand, I want to include heaps of businesses and, you know, spend heap of money. But on the other hand, I, I can't just do it for free. <laughs> so I need people that have like a pretty good wholesale rate, I guess you could say. So then I can, you know, get all the items for a smaller amount and then sell it for more. So I'm running a business as well. But I also want to help small other small businesses. It's like a really tricky balance with that because last time I did the small business advent calendars that it was hard like because once you factor in postage uh for a lot of these products and you know some of them didn't really have much of a like it would only be like a dollar discount or something so it it was almost breaking even I was almost breaking even for it so it, it was really kind of hard to, to do it. So I'm going to have to be like really careful with what I select this year. Or like try and like select ones from my local markets. People that I do markets with or something. I did it. 
I think in 2019, maybe. I don't know, or 2020. But I like ended up doing a massive trip. It took me like two hours or maybe three hours round trip. But I started at one location and just went and like hit them all. <laughs> I was all scheduled in and I picked everything up from like, you know, a one hour radius around me. So I could possibly do something like that as well. But that also like is hard for people that are like, you know, in Queensland or other side of Australia that want to ship their stuff. Decisions, decisions. And I wouldn't be able to do overseas again because that's just too hard and too much money to do the overseas ones. I'll have to do a small business advent for, you know, worldwide and then a small business advent for just in Australia. Cause I know like, I didn't want to risk it with my insurance for, you know, candles, for example. A lot of people wouldn't have insurance for overseas. So I didn't want to like purchase stuff, ship it overseas, get sued, destroy my life. <laughs> so so you know over someone else's product yeah i just wanted to like keep it within australia for the small business ones last year to receive and ship out which i think is why i also struggled with orders for them i didn't sell a lot because a the price point was really expensive but i mean it is all handmade stuff so but yeah the price point and also the fact i couldn't ship overseas for them so i think i might even do two different small business advent calendars now how i'll have ones that are I guess deemed safe my safe products <laughs> like bookmarks and stuff um like paper stuff or things that aren't going to explode like candles and heat packs they were the ones that i didn't want to ship overseas because i didn't want anything coming back to me i mean i should be fairly okay with like earrings and stuff um i'd feel pretty like safe sending those if you have any recommendations on what to put in these advent calendars i can't believe i'm already thinking about them in may but i just want to get ahead last i didn't do them last year because i just moved into the house and i just didn't have the money to purchase everything i think it cost me like two or three thousand dollars 2022 when i did it and i barely broke even on that i don't know if i want the same stuff or different things but okay let me think i had candles bookmarks i did have heat packs like little hand warmers jewel like jewelry like earrings which i think i may have like put in the notes if you don't have ears peers like just let me know and i'll put an extra scrunchie or something because i don't wear earrings like i can't wear them unless i do like clip-on earrings which i know there's people that do clip-ons which I can't wear them again. I, I can for like an hour, but then after an hour, I, the, <laughs> it just like, I can feel them and I have to get them off. I'm like, <laughs> no. And then my ears feel weird for after. I'm like, mm. so yeah, I just, I can't do it for sen sensory issues, I guess. <laughs> I just can't wear them. So yeah, maybe clip on earrings. I had like bath bombs. I had like beauty stuff, more like, Maybe face masks and stuff and bath salts, those sort of things. So I had like a bunch of beauty things. I had like these gorgeous little hair clips that I got. They were like hand painted. Really, that was so cute. So I got those. The, like key fobs as well. I had key fobs and I had like the beaded ones. Yeah, I had like a whole bunch of things. But yeah, if you have anything small, like has to fit in a small box. Um, it has to be relatively cheap or like low wholesale price has to be under five dollars that's what i said for last time because i just you i just couldn't do it like if i was charging yeah it just really it gets really hard and complicated <laughs> things to send overseas and also things to keep in australia so like anything like bath products and stuff anything like that goes onto the skin i've kept in australia as well because i don't know the rules and regulations regarding that either so yeah that's why it was so hard to send overseas last year anyway i rambled again um okay now let's get back to it and before i get too ahead of myself i'd like to thank zinth i don't know if i'm saying that right for sending me some prescription glasses i've actually collabed with them in the past uh where they've sent me some sunnies and yeah some i don't know if they were prescription at the time though but now i need prescription glasses they have kindly sent me these ones i chose i can't remember what i chose now Ooh, they're green i chose some green ones i don't wear glasses when i vlog because as you can see there's like massive glare from the windows <laughs> but if we can get like a little snapshot of what they look like without the glare they do look really cute i love a big glasses look i don't know these are the regular ones i wear most of the time so they're a bit smaller but i do really like the big round look to be honest and i think having like more than one pair 
will help me. I have no idea where I leave things. Like seriously, I'll be like, oh, where are my glasses? Don't know. So I have like another spare one in my car, but then the spare one in my car, sometimes I wear them when I drive and then I take them out and then I don't know where they are. And then when I go to drive, I'm like, oh, I don't have glasses because the backup backup are not in the backup backup spot. Yeah. So now I've got a backup 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 one which we love that. So they provide high quality and affordable eyewear and they have high quality lenses made of lightweight CR39, Superflex, MR8 and impact resistant PC and they have a 30 day fit and style guarantee, 365 day product guarantee, one-on-one -on -one service and eco-friendly packaging. So that's like a whole bunch of reasons that you can shop with them. All right, I will tag them down below with my affiliate link but I'll also put a code on the screen. So thank you so much for sending me these. I love them, they're so cute, but I just can't wear them when I vlog because the glare is annoying me. <laughs> thank you so much, let's get right back to the video. All right, so I've decided that I need to start collecting all these items for these orders. I just need to work out what I still need to make. I have got a couple of the tote bags made, so I'll start marking those off. I was gonna write everything down, but I thought that was kind of like not a good thing to do because I actually do have quite a bit of stock made because I made all of this for this launch which is quite a lot considering I usually only make one of each thing but I made all of the regular size scrunchies and I still have like most of the other bits and pot pieces left. I just need to go through and find it all because it's probably all like mixed up in between all this. Not sure if I took the mini scrunchies out and put them in my car for the market though. It's starting to look that way. Oh wait, no, never mind. Found them. These are the minis. So if I had my wall up and running, <laughs> I would be doing this from the wall, but because my wall is currently empty and I've got all these in boxes at the moment, I haven't put them in the wall because like they're not fully in stock. I haven't bothered with that just yet. But most of this stuff should be in stock because it's all the brand new stuff. The only things that might not be in stock are the petite scrunchies because I did take them to the market that I went to on the weekend because I was so low. Okay, I did have most of those, so that's a good start, I guess. I might even speed this up and try and yeah, get this all done. I just realized that none of my photos linked up when I uploaded these, which is not good for the headbands. So it makes it like really hard for people to know what they're buying. I don't know, what would you call, which one would you call peach? Which one would you call apricot? To me, that one would be peach and that one would be apricot because apricot's usually darker. Yeah, now I just feel bad because people have purchased and they might not even know what color they're getting. I swear I did this. I don't know if it's just unlinked for some reason. There we go. Now they're all adjusted. I actually don't have as much as I thought I would have uh, to make. I have like 22 orders sitting there, but I think just because like the carts were so big because of the tote bags, because they're so expensive. But as the stuff I actually have in stock, it's not looking like I have a lot. <laughs> I think most of it's out of stock. I'm going to do my like little thing that I do. I'm going to 
highlight everything. I actually had a question about this on my channel not long ago, asking if I could like do a video on it. It's just something I've done for 10 years. I even did it in school, like I would highlight everything. It just helps me like see things, I think. I don't know. I don't know why. It just really helps me. Look at my calendar. It's all like highlighted. I also had to get a new calendar because I couldn't, could not, I just, I could not see or like comprehend this other calendar that I had because this one has an outline which I really, really appreciate. Calendar that I had earlier in the year, it was just white. It was only white and I just, I couldn't, ah, I just couldn't do it. I hated it. So yeah, that one I love. It's also Barbie, which is cool. I will show you what I mean by highlighting everything. I pretty much just like choose different colors uh, for different things. I also like write very quickly. So I don't like write, you know, Jane Petite. I write, I write P. So like I'll have a P next to it. Or for a bow, I'll have a B. Tote bag is TB, which is a new one. XL, obvious one for there. <laughs> um, the thin elastic scrunchies, they're the ones I don't usually get. So I write thin next to those. And anything that doesn't have thin next to it, like Ella, I know that's a wide elastic scrunchie. What else we got? We've got scrunchie key fob, SKF key fob, which is just like the normal basic one. So I've got both of those. And then mini scrunchies, MS, and then like headband, HB. I just try and like highlight those little bits and pieces. And then when they're completely done and I've got them, I mark them green. I also mark HC, which is hair claw in green, like just like the HC because it is made and like ready to go. I just need to go collect it from the wall or wherever. Anyway, okay, I'm gonna show you what I mean. Purple for me is usually XLs. And I got pink, that's bows. Yellow, I usually do for things that I don't really have a color for. So like I have the thin in yellow. I think it's just because it's the brightest color, so it like makes me it makes it stand out. But I also usually do like mini scrunchies and DIY packs in yellow as well. Like do this aqua color for scrunchy key fobs and key fobs. If I have a lot of them, I usually like separate the colors and do different colors or do different like I like do a square around them instead of like coloring them all in or like I'll do the circles. So like I also do shapes and like different ways of doing it as well like DIY packs I'll usually do like like this around the DIY which I don't know if you can even see that but that's sort of what I do and then petites I don't really have a color for petites usually I just kind of like whatever colors left they're a newer product compared to a lot of these other ones that I've been used doing for years the petites, you know, only came out two or three years ago, whereas like the rest of them came out a long time before that. And I think for the tote bags, I'll do like the square thing. I oh, know. I think I got them all. But yeah, that's pretty much what I do every time I do orders. And I have done so for 10 years. But yeah, even when I was studying, you should see some of the books. When I was in high school, I would do very similar thing. Like I would highlight words or like put underlines. I had like a set. I had um like a black pen, a black felt tip, and then a heap of highlighters. And when I would write stuff, I would like, you know, write a sentence and anything that was important or like had to be remembered or like of significance, I would go over that word in the felt pen so it's like more bold. And then if it was really important, I'd highlight the section, but only small segments. And it just helped me remember and helped me like study, like study cards that I did. They were all like that. I really should have kept them because they were really good. Uh, and that's how like, I guess I scored so well because they just helped me remember. And I guess I could visualize it in my head because I could see where the bold bits were and like the highlighted parts and I was able to like read it almost like remember it that way anyway that's me and my weird quirk that I have hopefully that helped anyone that wanted to know about how I highlight things I'm gonna go to the scrunchie wall and we're gonna see if any of these are actually in stock so as you can see the scrunchie wall has had better days that's for sure it's always so much darker in this room even though it's literally right next to the other one it's so weird well we've got these that's Lumi. That's probably the only one that I thought would be in stock as well. Most of these are petites, which I wouldn't have in this wall. Allah, I do. That's Allah. 
none of these would be in here. None of those, but I do have some bows up here. So I thought I'd have a look at these, because I know I've got a couple of these in stock. I need one of those, I don't know which colour though. Cotton candy, oh that should be easy enough, it'd be that one. Be the one that's like really bright I reckon. I'll double check, but I reckon it's that one. And then of course, once I've selected those and found them, I mark them off. Like that. Also, this is a random side note. Check this out. You probably won't know what I'm talking about, but I changed this around. So I like turned it around. So now it's got the nice facing edge that's actually been done. The opposite side, there's no paint along here and it's like drips. So it looks really bad. Also like this is really nice. Like that table, I actually did better on this side than the other side because this was the side that I originally was on. Also, this looks nicer. Because, like, this is, like, where I'd take photos and stuff. So all the boards are, like, all evenly placed. Whereas on the other side, it has the lip. And it's all like that. It's, all like, messy. I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> Took a lot of effort to turn it around. I had to take everything out of it. And then, yeah, flip it, pretty much. But I managed. My brother did make me this. It's, like, two IKEA cube units, eight ones. It has like wood on the ground to like give it a bit of height. It's also got a piece of wood here because I wanted like a little cubby for the stuff. So I've got two cubbies and then the actual top part, I think that's MDMF and then that is like pine or something. And then I've like whitewashed it with this paint stuff I had. Oh, I purchased for it. And then, yeah, it's all assembled together. This was stuck on as well. I think this came in two parts. That's why there's a line there. I mean, you can barely see it, but you can see it way more on the other side. Because, like, look at that. You can kind of see. So that's what was vis visible on the other side. But, yeah, this side's been done really well by me. <laughs> but just not the other side. I don't know. It just it felt backwards to me. I, mean, I know I've been in this house for almost a year. But yeah, it's just, it's been feeling backwards the whole time. Also considering whether to just like knock this wall down that's on the back of here and extend the room out. But I keep changing in my mind about it because like now that I've changed the table around, I do much prefer, yeah, this like layout. It just feels more roomy. I mean, it's really not that big of an issue to walk into the other room to get the scrunchies out of the wall because I only do that like once a week. I'm just really keen to like build... But I know that's going to be a couple years from now because I still have to <laughs> save up a new deposit. Yeah, figure out what exactly I want. Also, I should probably mention with this, when I've got something that's half made, rather than just like highlighting the whole thing or like using a different highlighter, I just put like a little mark next to it. So I guess I do that. So then I know that I've got it. It's not fully finished yet. So hoping I might have had one of these almost made. Oh, wait, here it is. Holly, perfect.
also just received this package in the mail and I thought we'd open it up and have a look what's in there. I haven't actually seen what's in here yet. some cute little stickers so made by amber 2021 who sent me these really cute handmade bags oh my god it's a coin purse like for markets like you wear it around um your waist that's so cute okay i love that also i really like the colors got like a makeup bag That's really sweet. Oh, and she's put my name on that one. That's so cute. To another little bag. Oh, this one's like a really big bag. That's so cute. Even that has a little pocket in there and zips and stuff. Oh my gosh, these are all so cute. I really like this. I'm so lucky. <laughs> You guys are the best. Thank you so much, Emma, for sending me these. And she's also wrote me a really cute note. Oh my gosh. Two pages worth. It's gonna make me cry. That was really, really sweet. Oh my god. Thank you so much, Amber. This is really, really sweet. I love receiving cute little messages off you guys. Especially like when you take the time to write it down and send it to me. It's so nice. So again, if you wanted to check out Amber's creations, she makes bags, scrunchies, bows and key fobs. Just like these ones. You'll be able to go to her website, which is made by Amber Tucker. And it's an Etsy website. So that's what that looks like. And you can also use the code Taylor15 to get 15% off your order. And Amber's also from the United States, so these came all the way from the United States. And my dad's had them in this car for like, oh, over a week, I think. I still have my PO box set to my hometown, but, and if I, if I go to my hometown and then come back to the house that I live in now, it's an hour to like round, of, round trip now. So <laughs> I try and get dad to just go to the post office for me and collect anything you guys send me, which is why it sometimes takes me a little bit of time to get back to you guys or talk about it on my channels. Well, thanks again, Amber. I cannot wait to use these ones, especially the um, one for the markets. Well, that's what I'd be using it for anyway, to like put stuff in. I really, really appreciate it. And I appreciate all your support and your lovely, lovely message as well. But let's get back to the video.
Hey guys, I do still have a few more things to make, such as eight tote bags, but I want to try and get all the orders that need to go out today out, and I think I've got everything made for those. I think the only things I need to make now are the eight tote bags and a couple bows for another order, which I'm combining. Heaps and heaps of bows just hanging about, <laughs> and I've got... Yeah, heaps of stuff so I'm very excited to package that one up when everything's ready but yeah I think I might start the day by packaging up these orders I've got a few here so I'm going to do that hey guys it's Tay from the future um, I'm just jumping on to end the vlog because this vlog is five hours long I do not edit five hour vlogs. I should have done this um, previously. I should have split it. The first half making, the second half packaging. So yeah, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for the next part two, which will be me packaging them all up. Also making a bunch of tote bags. So it's not just gonna be packaging, it's gonna be a few other things as well in that vlog. But yeah, thank you so much for everyone that did place an order with me. I'm so excited. This was my biggest launch yet. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a lovely day. Bye.